taking the start. Uh, we do now have everyone who is taking the start uh, in position. So the refs starting to rise. The final 12 lap race of the season for the No Limits Cup and Pirelli Super Series 600 Championship. Red lights go out now. Away we go. And it's a good start made by Finley Arscott. He tries to come across a cover from Tom Fisher, which he will succeed in doing so. And that really delayed Fisher. He's in danger of losing places here into the first corner. Arscott gets the advantage. Where is Tom Fisher in all of that? He is, I think, down to third. I'm not entirely sure who that was that broke through into second place. It wasn't Jack Bednarek. It could have been Andy Smart, actually, uh, with a, a good start on the uh, number 10 BDR racing bike. We'll see what order they're in at the old hair, but if we can, they're all together as they turn into the quick right-hander. Certainly, it was Arscott who held on to the lead there, but as soon as he launched off the line, he immediately started pulling to the right to try and uh, block Tom Fisher, and I think uh, Tom lifted off the throttle, and, and that really lost him some momentum into the first corner. So around the claims they go, all of them safely through the first half a lap, it looks, and uh, to Comis, Finley Arscott trying his best to escape, but not succeeding in doing so. There are four of them very, very close together as they come onto the exhibition straight for the first time and uh, approach the braking zone into the Fogarty S's. They'll turn left onto the Melbourne Loop. And who's going to appear with the race lead? It is Finley Arscott by the looks of it. And uh, yeah, Fisher actually down to fourth. That's Tommy Fielding second, Andy Smart third, and Tom Fisher fourth with Jack Benderak in fifth position. That's the order they stay in as they drop into the Melbourne hairpin for the first time. So that really did rough uh, Tom Fisher up in the uh, opening exchanges. And we've got an interesting race on our hands now. Tommy Fielding with a 13,000 mile road bike engine underneath him is running as, as well as he has all weekend here. Second place for the 556 bike. And he started third, Fisher fourth, Benderek fifth, but about to lose that fifth place, I think, to the number 70 of um, Lee Wells as they go into Red Gate Corner. No, Lee actually not close enough into the braking zone to make that move. Yellow flag, ah, because someone is slow. Uh, that looks like Oliver Barr, isn't it? Number 24, yeah, it is Oliver Barr, who's had a few mechanical issues this weekend, and uh, he is touring into the pit lane and into the paddock, so Oliver Barr... Unfortunately, his weekend is run. Uh, so briefly there, the yellow flags out as he was going slowly, but uh, I think that was all that was for. Uh, right, leaders up at McLean's, and they're all still together, these top four. We've had a lead change there, though, haven't we? That looks like, is that Fielding in front now? It's certainly not Finley Arscott leading anymore. It was Fielding who was second at the line, but Andy Smart and Tom Fisher were all close enough to be challenging as well. So which of those four is it that's broken through? I think that is Fielding. You just see a flash of red on the bike as it comes out of coppice corner that would suggest that Tommy Fielding may have the advantage over um, Finley Arscott on this second lap of 12. Down towards the chicane, yes it is, Fielding leading the way, Arscott carrying a lot of speed out of the Fogarty S's though, smart third, but Tom Fisher now looking up the inside of him, Jack Benderek is going elbow to elbow with uh, Lee Wells for fifth position. As they round the hairpin though, Tommy Fielding in the lead. Now he hasn't won a race yet in Super Series 600. And I'll be honest, I didn't expect it to come this weekend with the issues that he's had. But uh, he is leading the way and actually has a few lengths advantage over our Scott. Tom Fisher into third now. He picked the pocket of Andy Smart through the Melbourne hairpin. Benrock ben fended off Lee Wells, and actually Dan Stamper has come through past him. Uh, in Cup 600, Wilfred Turner is leading, and Sam Throw is second. It's about the first time, really, uh, that those two have shared the track, because uh, Sam Throw has definitely been the quicker of the two this weekend, but I did wonder whether part of that was just Wilfred Turner managing it and not taking any risks. He knew he didn't have to be beating Sam Throw in races this weekend to take the title, and uh, maybe now we're seeing uh, Wilfred Turner really pushing it now that he knows the championship is secured. Leaders then up through Schwantz Kerr, fielding the leader. Vinyar's got the green machine in second position. Third place for Tom Fisher now. And Fisher is the one who looks most likely to make a challenge here. Peeking to the inside at Coppice Corner. Decide better and get off that then. Instead focuses on getting the exit from the corner. Took right in behind Finley Arscott, pulls out of the slipstream at the last second. Oliver Barr is back on track, by the way. Good news for him, terrible news for the leaders, because they're going to put a lap on him here, I think, through the final sector. Through come the leaders, bit of a moment there for Fielding through the chicane, and that means that Arscott and Fisher are both closing in on him as they head down towards the Melbourne Loop for the third time. And uh, are we going to see a change in the order? No, we're not. Finley Arscott stays in second place, Tom Fisher, that really tight exit line that he likes. Oliver Barr thankfully gets out of the way in time, pulls into the pit lane, and now I think probably will choose to call it a day. And the lead 
battle can continue unabated. Three laps about to be completed. Nine more laps to go. Tommy Fielding still leading the way. Finley Arscott second. Tom Fisher now about to try and make his move for that second place. The two title protagonists uh, throughout the course of the 2022 season are doing battle one last time in Pirelli Super Series uh, 600. And Finley Arscott, time being, fends off his title rival. Um, Tom Fisher sits back in, four, in a third position. Geldart from the back of the grid just moved into 14th ahead of Dan Burnham who's also moved from the back of the grid that was the only change in position on that lap and Tom Fisher by the way just set the fastest lap of the race at 136.216 and he's right on the back wheel of Finley Arscott as they come out of the old hairpin and make their way towards Schwantz Curve are we going to see a move into McLean's corner Tommy Fielding riding really defensively there not leaving any space on the inside line despite that comes off McLean's pretty well so uh, Finley Arscott not able to take advantage and build a challenge into Combis Corner Corner. They are just starting to drop Andy Smart slightly now, although, well actually no, Smart was three tenths quicker than the leader last time, uh, but everyone was quicker than the leader last time in that lead group, Tommy Fielding uh, riding a bit defensively and that's ultimately not the fastest way of getting around the trap, but it is preventing for the time being, Finley Arscott coming past him, Finley's got a really good exit from the chicane though, he pulls to the outside of Tommy Fielding, down into the Melbourne hairpin, neither of them leaving each other much space, Fielding very very late on the brakes, as long as he pulls it up though at the apex, he should hold on to the lead, uh, which he does, comes off the Melbourne hairpin, still in front then, Fielding the leader, Arscott second, goes for the move on the inside line though, Finley Arscott commits for it, gets the lead away, I think he got to the apex, sits up Tommy Fielding slightly, but Fielding fights back on the exit, brilliant stuff, Tommy Fielding is not going to be shaken from the race lead without a real fight here and Finley Arscott is going to have to work hard for this looks to the inside of Redgate corner late on the brakes but Tommy Fielding turns across his nose and hangs on to the lead that has definitely delayed these leading three uh, to the point that Andy Smart is back with them someone's gone down out of the final corner fairly spectacularly that is uh, Geldart isn't it yeah it's 911 James Geldart his bike in the middle of the road this could be a red flag he is on his knees catching his breath but the bike is in a very precarious position now it's not the biggest grid which means that there is a, a gap there's a, another couple of bikes about to come out of that corner uh, and then there is a gap in the traffic marshals may be able to move the bike uh, without the need of a red flag or a safety car which i'm hopeful of uh, that is what they're doing and i know they're sort of uh, ignoring uh, james but i think he did give them a thumbs up there he's just catching his breath on the uh, grass uh, what on earth's gone wrong? It's been a difficult weekend for James, actually, in uh, lots of the races that he's been in. Uh, the bike, uh, the rear tyre has come off the rim, which is not helping the recovery process, but they have now got it rolling. The race leaders, meanwhile, come out of the chicane, and uh, they're almost three abreast for the race lead. Finley Arscott to the inside of Tommy Fielding. Tom Fisher looking to the outside, but Fielding is good on the brakes. He's not going to be uh, beaten into a braking zone, is he? Carries on leading the race. Andy Smart keeping a watching brief there as well. There are yellow flags, of course, at the Goddard's hairpin. So no overtaking here. James Geldart, by the way, has now walked away to the barriers where he continues to catch his breath. Uh, surprisingly, because that looked like quite a big slide down the road. So it is Fielding who leads the way. Arscott second, Fisher third. Back into green flag racing at Redgate Corner. And that's good news for Tom Fisher, who looks to the inside of Finley Arscott. But again, Finley, good enough on the brakes to see him off. There's another faller now at the Melbourne hairpin and uh, that rider is picking his own bike up who might that be now, it's one towards the back of the field well, the second half of the field anyway and is it, no, there goes Dan Burnham I think uh, no, it, it might be Dan Burnham, it is, Dan Burnham has gone down so Dan and James have both been coming through the field together haven't they, from the back and they both crashed within, <coughs> excuse me, within a lap of each other it's unfortunate, the yellow flags out uh, still at the Goddard's hairpin as well because they're actually still in the process of getting James Geldart's car out of the way and uh, rear timing off the rim is not making life easy for Marshalls down there we've had quite a few incidents to deal with this weekend so we are on the sixth lap we'll be halfway through the race at the end of this lap we've still got a four-way fight for the race lead excuse me going on with Tommy Fielding uh, last time I checked leading the way they're about to arrive at the foggy S's and he is still leading and uh, he is leading by not a big margin, but that seems to be okay. He seems quite comfortable, doesn't he? Tom Fisher looking to the inside of Finley Arscott for second place at the Melbourne Hairpin, where the yellow flags are back in. Now Dan Burnham is out of the way, as is his bike. And so full racing can continue there, and indeed at Goddard's, where I think we have green flags again. But no one at this point choosing to make a move. Across the line they go again. Tom Fisher with a good exit 
from the final turn now he tried this a lap ago getting to the inside of Finley Arscott but Finley is just so so confident of the braking which sort of says a lot about how confident um, Tommy Fielding is in the braking because Finley can't outbrake him can he? He's tried a couple of times and actually at the moment can't seem to get close enough to try it again. Uh, Cup 600 being led still by Wilfred Turner. He's pulled a 3.3 second gap over Sam Throw. So Wilfred, I think, proving a bit of a point here that he, he has been uh, riding within himself up until this point. And we're now seeing exactly what Wilfred is capable of doing. So he leads Sam Throw with Caden Wilkinson a further six seconds back. So all of the action in this race is in the Super Series element. Whereas earlier on today, the Super Series were quite uh, uneventful. And it was the Cup 600 battle that was the closest one how these things work and uh, this is one of the better Super Series 600 races of the season actually a cracking way to round out the uh, 2022 campaign Tommy Fielding hunting hunting for that first victory in the category he got his first podium at Anglesey actually uh, was on the podium in all four races at Anglesey he revisited the podium last time in the fourth race at Cadwell Park but he's yet to stand on top of it and if uh, Finley Arscott has his own way he won't be standing on top of it here today Finley again pulls to the outside of Tommy Fielding into the breaking zone at the Melbourne hairpin but Tommy is able to get it stopped no drifts a bit wide this time and Arscott has got the lead Finley Arscott goes into the lead of the race coming out of the Melbourne hairpin and now Tommy Fielding has to try and fight back immediately because I think Finley might be a little bit quicker now that he's out in front let's see Tommy Fielding good on the brakes is he going to be able to have a go into Redgate corner he's a couple of bike lengths back in the slipstream they go through to start their eighth lap of the race and Tommy Fielding is looking to the inside of Redgate but not quite able to do it so it's now Finley Arscott then the champion in the lead of the race Tom Fisher now moves up to attack Tommy Fielding at the second position but that was uh, just a little bit too deep on the brakes into Melbourne that time for Tommy and uh, drifted wide of the apex and that was enough to open the door for Finley Arscott but Finley's not pulling away as they get through the old hair bit still the four of them together and uh, just don't write out Andy Smart for this either that was a new fastest lap for Finley as well by the way 135.89 even with that overtake I suppose it's being a mistake from Fielding rather than a lunge from Finley uh, meant that Finley wasn't really delayed by that at all I think Tom Fisher has just moved into second place as they go through Coppice uh, yes, that's Tom Fisher ahead of Fielding. So Fielding now starting to slip backwards. Tom Fisher wanting to go after Finley Arscott here. Remember how strong Finley was in the second half of that race earlier on today. He's hit the front at the right time, really. We have four laps to go at the end of this one. Tom Fisher's determined not to let him go. He's got a good run out of the chicane. Uh, and he's smart moving up to challenge Tommy Fielding now. His race starting to unravel a little bit. And now his chances of staying on the podium aren't looking all that clever. That's the Melbourne hairpin, though of them continue to circulate nose to tail much as we've seen in the cup thousand races um, earlier on this weekend no separation at all between the leading pack come out of uh, goddard's for the eighth time of asking four more laps remain and tom fisher now moves up to try and challenge finley arscott it would mean a lot i think to tom uh, if he could get the better of finley here having been beaten to the championship by finley at least beat him in the last race that would prove a bit of a point of his own wouldn't it but uh, he is capable of beating Arscott in a toe-to-toe -to -toe fight and into the old hairpin then and he's right behind Finley Arscott good exit there from the old hairpin for Tom Fisher they've got a couple of bat markers they will catch uh, that's Logan and Mashkin McIntosh running 22nd and 23rd overall they're going to catch them I think towards the end of this lap so that could be a decisive moment in this uh, race Tom Fisher still second as they go towards Coppice where he stole that second place from fielding a lap ago he just did the fastest lap 35.697 about uh, half a second slower than Finley Arscott went in the previous race but the pace is not going to be as quick in this one because they're all battling each other no one really able to pull out away from this group Tommy Fielding really slow out of the chicane that time and Andy Smart just rides straight around the outside of him on the inside of the back markers they will go Fielding coming back actually at Smart into the hairpin and uh, gets that third place back that was bold 
uh, but he makes it work. And then actually Andy Smart, oh, squeezes around the outside of a bat marker. That was a close moment, uh, but manages not to lose too much momentum because of it. Leaders coming through then, three more laps to go in the race and in the season for Super Series 600. And Tom Fisher is as close as he's ever been now to fit the R. Scott down the pit straight. He looks to the right-hand side. That's the inside for Redgate Corner, but breaks earlier than Finley. Finley carries the speed into the turn. Supreme confidence in the front end of that Kawasaki, and he manages to hold on to the advantage. But they are both, well, all four of them really, are riding pretty close to the limit, I would say now. The, the lap times aren't suggesting it, but they're really asking a lot of the tyres and the bikes and themselves indeed to be able to carry this sort of corner speed uh, it's through the braking zones they're really pushing it into the corners braking late braking right up to the apex and that's where it becomes very easy just to lose the front and uh, go sliding down the road but fingers crossed they don't i want to see this battle go right down to the wire between the four of them is it still four of them though because I would say that Finley Arscott and Tom Fisher are just pulling away now. They were seven tenths clear of Tommy Fielding at the start of the lap, but Fielding just did the fastest first sector of anybody all race, a purple first sector for Tommy. So he's still just as quick now as he was at the uh, beginning of the race, if not quicker. And uh, if the top two start tripping over each other, he might be able to get there. His weakness is the chicane. He just can't get that change of direction uh, out of the chicane. But then he comes barreling back up the inside of Andy Smart, who briefly was ahead of him, uh, and reclaims the place in the Melbourne head. It runs too wide again, though, does Tommy. And Andy Smart will get third place now as they come uh, off the Melbourne head. Him. Andy can't have had too many uh, podium finishes this year. I don't think he's done the full year, has he? Um, I don't think he has. I mean, he might have missed a couple of rounds, but he's not had a podium. So Andy Smart into third place, looking for his first podium of 2022. Another back marker goes a lap down there um, into the first corner. That's Nicky Williams, I think, who went off Redgate in the Enduro yesterday. So he's on the tarmac this time, though. Two laps to go. Fastest lap set by Finley Arscott, but it was a couple of tenths, quarter of a second or so quicker than Tom Fisher. That still only puts the gap at just under four tenths of a second, though, and they're right back together again as they go through the old hair bit. It is really between these two now, though. Smart and Fielding have delayed each other to the point uh, that they've dropped over a second behind. So, fittingly, it is the two who fought all season long for the championship who will do battle for the final race win of 2022. And Tom Fisher has a really, really good run out of McLean's as they got the hill towards Coppers. He's looking to the inside line. But no, I think Finley Arscott got to the apex first. A hootenly just, though. Tom Fisher is hunting him down. He'll have a nice slipstream now down the exhibition straight. He pulls out of that slipstream very early. So I think he must be alongside Finley. That was to the outside line, though, into the Fogarty S's. So the preferred line lies with the champion and he emerges from the chicane as the race leader but Tom Fisher asking all the right questions now of uh, the number 77 rider into the Melbourne head and they'll have one more lap to go at the end of this one and I'm not uh, confident in predicting who's going to win this Andy Smart's not quite going to have time to close back in on them I don't think there's also a good battle going on between Jack Bendrack and Dan Stamper for fifth position Dan Stamper having one of his best showings uh, in the um, sixth position but he's actually right on the tail of Jack Benderek and has been for quite some time so final lap begins then the gap is three tenths of a second but we know that Fisher seems to close in uh, through the crater curves old hairpin McLean's and Coppers it's that sort of middle part of the lap where he looks a bit better than Finley so if the move is going to cook it may well be there he's sized him up a couple of times into uh, Coppers corner I wonder if that's where he'll try and commit to move. There is a bat marker as well. They're going to catch a bat marker up at that part of the circuit. Fisher's had a really good exit again from the old hairpin. So as I suspected, he's closing in. But where do they catch the slower traffic? Right into McLean's. They both got the inside of it. And that takes away an overtaking opportunity for Tom Fisher. Can he get off McLean's quicker? No, not really. So they're pretty equal heading up the hill for the last time. Finley Arscott turns into Coppice Corner. Tom Fisher carries a lot of speed into uh, the corner at the top of the hill. The highest point of the circuit. And then they start to come back downhill gradually past the exhibition centre into the Fogarty S's. Three more opportunities, realistically, for Tom Fisher to get one over on the man who beat him to the championship. Is he going to do it through the chicane? No, but he's a bit neater off the chicane than Finley. He's got to have a go, surely, on the brakes into the Melbourne air, but he's looking for it. He peeks to the inside line, but Arscott is too late on the brakes for him. Uh, too late on the brakes, full stop, I think. They both drift a bit wide of the apex, but Finley Arscott holding on to the advantage and gets off the corner, crucially, better than Tom Fisher could. So I don't think Fisher's going to be able to do it. Into the last corner of the season they go. It's 
It's been a fitting end to the Pirelli Super Series 600 Championship. Finley Arscott and Tom Fisher doing battle one last time. And the victory goes to the champion. Finley Arscott wins here the final race at Donington Park for the Super Series 600. Second place for Tom Fisher. Third, Andy Smart. Fourth, Tommy Fielding. Jack Benderet comes home in fifth, getting the better of Dan Stanton by just four tenths of a second. Uh, sixth position for Lee Wells. And in seventh place, it's another Cup 600 win.